Welcome to part four of a three-part series. How does that work? Well, color got away on me, so we need to address the color in the photo. So far, we have developed the photo, we have corrected the geometry, we've improved the details, and we've enhanced the time of day to more of a twilight shot. However, somewhere along the line, the color palette has got away on me. I feel that the blue in the sky is a little too intense and clashes a little bit with the foreground and the warmer band of cloud around the horizon. So in this video, we're going to see if we can't sort those colors out and give them more unity. There are so many different ways and so many different tools to manipulate color in photo editing software. But one of the common issues is actually controlling color in our very brightly exposed pixels in the photo. And it was a problem I struggled with for many years until I learned this trick. Let me share it with you. So while it may be hard to see, we do in fact have a lot of color going on in this scene. And the easiest way to see that is if I grab the saturation slider and boost that up. We've got orange, blue, green, magenta, turquoise in the sea. It's all going on. So there's no wonder that these colors are starting to clash. So let me reset that and let's see what we can do. I'm actually thinking of simplifying things down to more of a two-tone palette. So we could go blue in the shadows, yellow orange in the highlights but there is an issue when you use a lot of tools to try and do that if i come into the color harmony tool for example and i start boosting up the warmth saying i want to make this area more orange through here you can see what's happening to the very brightest pixels they're actually getting blown out and just losing detail same thing happens if we try taking it the other way again they're just going so white that they don't really retain much color information. What about color balance? Well, if we come in here and we say, okay, well now we can control both the highlights and the shadows. So let's boost up the highlights with some red, some orange. Well, look, if I take the yellow all the way again, you can see that we're just going nuclear through here. Now, obviously we don't wanna take the sliders that far anyway, but we don't need to take them too far before things start to fall apart anyway. So that's just no good. Combine that with what will happen in the shadows if we start trying to inject some blue in there as well. That's just crushing that down, those shadows into pure black. So while I have been obnoxiously heavy handed with that, you get the idea of what's going on. And that's not what we want. So again, I'm going to reset this and I'm going to come up to one of my favorite tools, something we looked at in depth in episode number one, and that is the develop tool. Within the develop tool, we have a tool worthy of just being included as a tool all on its own, and that is curves. Usually in the default version of curves, if we start manipulating points on here, we are working directly with contrast. Yes, the more contrast we introduce, the more saturation we get in the mid-tone colors, but that's not what I want to use curves for in this instance. What I would like to do is actually increase some yellows into the highlights, and some blues in the shadows, but without suffering from the effects that we saw when I used color balance. So I'm gonna to go to the blue tab here. This lets me talk directly into the blues. So you watch this, if I put a point on and start bringing it up, we are putting more blue into the midtones. bring the point down. Looks like we're adding yellow, which for all intents and purposes we are, but another way of looking at that is we are actually taking blue away, therefore, leaving the yellow more visible. So the trick is this, it's pretty simple. Grab the top right point and just bring that down. And now you can see that I'm able to inject yellow and warmth into those highlight areas that we had before. But whereas previously they were getting blown out and we were losing all the detail, now we are subtracting blue. So we're not making the pixels any brighter, we're just taking away the blue component which leaves us with that yellow but with all the details still intact. Conversely, we can do the same with the shadows. I can grab this point, and this time I'm gonna take it up, so I'm adding blue into the shadows. Let me go really heavy handed so you can actually see exactly what's going on. So as I take that blue slider up, we are putting more blue into the shadows. Obviously, we don't want anywhere near that much, but just a little bit, just a little bit to balance out the opposite side, which was the yellows. And just like that, if I toggle the before and after, we have created a two color complementary wash. So before and after. 
color grading with the curves tool is exceptionally powerful. So we could even go in and just add some reds into that if we wanted to. We could come into the green channel, have a little play around with that. If we reduce the green, that's going to push in more magenta. And whereas previously we were working with the top and bottom end of the blue curve, so the highlights and the shadows, with the red and green, we've just played into those midtones. So here's our before, here's our after, before and after. And to see our absolute before and after, let me load the original photo as its own layer. Let's put the opacity to 100 so that we can see exactly what that raw photo looked like back in episode one. And here is our golden sunset version. So our original underexposed, very gray photo. And then here's our version with the lighthouse nice and straight. I still feel like the color may be a little bit overcooked on this one. But as with most of the photos that you see me edit here on YouTube, it's more about the teaching than it is the finished photo edit. And if you do like the way that I teach Luminar Neo and photo editing, you might be interested to know that I am working on my very first comprehensive course showing everything that I know about photo editing in Luminar Neo that is gonna take beginners from zero through to hero. That is the goal. That's going to be happening when Luminar Neo releases the brand new version that is coming out in the big fall update. That's when I'm going to be getting to work on it with that brand new version of Luminar Neo with all those great new tools that are coming out. If you don't have Luminar Neo yet, you can get it from the link in the description below with a discount. So like I say, write course below. And once that course is ready, I'll go back through all those comments and I'll put a link for you so that you can check it out. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this four part series. Uh, let me know what you think about me doing uh, four parters like this, breaking it up rather than hitting you with all the information in one video. I'd like to know what you think. First time I've ever done that. It's been about six, seven years on YouTube now. So uh, why have I not done this sooner? Probably because it's been a lot of hard work. But that aside, at the end of this edit, I said I wasn't super happy with the final result. And that is often the case. If you suffer from that situation as well, there is a way that you can create a look, put it onto your photo, and then reduce that effect. If you're not sure how to do it and would like me to show you, you can check that out in that video right there, where I'll give you some easy steps so that creating over the top photo edits is no longer an issue for you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in that video or another one. Bye-bye for now.